here's my little test setup um, <coughs> so that I can properly get square in my head uh, the way these uh, little inductive three wire sensors work. Um, now, I'm, I, I sure, I'm sure I can't be the only person that completely understands how a switch works um, and doesn't really get uh, uh, these NPN or PMP inductive sensors. Um, so, which is why I've, you know, rather than just wire it up, um, I've sat down and decided to really figure out how it works. Um, first, I'll pull in a little hand-drawn diagram of the circuit. So, so in EEV blog style, this is a, a, a Dave Cam or uh, was it Dave Cad? Um, and what you've got is uh, on the on the sensor. Uh, this grey wire is the sensor, you've got three wires, a brown, which is your positive voltage, a blue, which is zero volts, and then a black, which is your switch wire, uh, which or, or they call it a, a load wire. And this diagram shows roughly how it works. So you've got your plus 24 volt rail, or in, in this test setup, a 19 volt rail, uh, and that powers the magic. And the magic is the bit that senses the metal. So, say my screwdriver was coming in here. Um, this magic um, would sense the screwdriver and then uh, operate this switch. Now, this sensor um, is uh, normally closed. So, it's, it's as drawn on the diagram here. So get a better view of the diagram. It's as drawn on the diagram. Uh, closed. So in this current state, it's exactly as drawn. Now, as a as a piece of metal comes in here, once it gets close enough, within four mil, it pulls this switch open. Now, it's not a mechanical switch; it's uh, an MPN uh, switch, piece of uh, three layers of dope silicon, and they electronically switch that circuit. Um, so you can see at the moment, in its standard state, with no metal anywhere near it, uh, current will flow down here through the coil and along the black load wire and then down through the switch and out through the blue wire. Uh, thus, in this case, pulling the, pulling the relay closed. When a piece of metal comes in, in near to the magic, um, or to the sensor, uh, this switch will be pulled open and the relay will, uh, the coil will de-energise and the relay will switch. And it's as simple as that. Um, the, the, I think the confusing part was a normal switch. This, of course, would be powered by your finger flipping the switch. But in this case, of course, it's powered by this part of the sensor. Um, but of course you need to provide power to that to to flick the switch as it were and that's how they work and you can see here and I don't know uh, I don't know if you can hear the relay going but you can certainly see the light on the back of the sensor flicking on and off there you go inductive sensors I thought it was probably best to go and look up the specs of the various components before I uh, started wiring them all up in series. Um, because obviously there's limits to how much current these things can uh, sink. Uh, and yeah, it's, uh, I, didn't, I didn't want to accidentally sink too much current uh, and uh, blow up half a dozen sensors uh, when I wire them in series. So uh, the, first, the, the biggest current drawer is going to be the relay coil um, and uh, most places don't actually give you uh, the, the, co um, the coil current <coughs> but you can work it out quite easily um, you need you need the part number which in this case is a finder type 40 31s um, and that's a 24 volt coil and I, I measured the resistance at, um, about a thousand ohms um, the best spec I could find. Uh, oddly enough, uh, Farnell sell them, 
um, but I couldn't find exactly that, that make, but they seem to do two different uh, coil resistances, one at about um, 1.2 kilo ohms, and one I think it was 300 ohms, something like that, quite low. Um, so I wanted to make sure, and the best I could find was 1.2 kilo ohms. Um, so I, met, I, <laughs> I just gave up and measured it, and it, it actually measured at about 1,000 ohms. Um, but that's pretty good. I mean, it's that means the coil is drawing in the region of 20 milliamps, um, which yeah, I'm not surprised. It's a it's a very small um, miniature relay, so uh, it's not going to be drawing a huge amount of power. Anyway, um, the other thing I had to look up um, were these, and I looked them up, and uh, online um, I found uh, this diagram, and there was. As you can see, that, that says 300 milliamps. Um, there seem to be a variety of, uh, or a variety of specs for these, despite the fact that they all look almost identical. Um, some some claim they could sink 300 milliamps, uh, others 200 milliamps. Uh, if I look on the side of this, though, uh, it does actually say 200 milliamps. Uh, I, my guess is it, probably that it could do 300. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they all come out of the same factory and uh, that's just uh, been a bit conservative. Anyway, so wire them in series. Um, you do it like this, so each sensor, I'll, I'll just do two sensors. Um, but I, I don't know how much current these require but it's not going to be a lot. Um, but to, to wire them in series, each one has to have its own supply and then you wire the load in series, so each each sense each next sensor provides the earth or the neutral for the next sensor down the line, and that's what I'm going to wire up now. I'll just get two sensors. I don't see there's much point in wiring up more than two. Obviously, if you were to have another sensor, it would be here, and it would go back to the 24 volt line. This would move down, and you'd just put the, the next one in. So, get the soldering iron. Off again, and I'll wire that one up. And here's the two sensors wired up in series. Now, there's a bit of unexpected behaviour here, um, which gave me a little bit of a puzzle uh, um, at first, but I think I've figured out why it's happening. Uh, and it, it makes some sense, actually. You can see we've got uh, two normally closed sensors uh, wired up to the relay. Um, let me find my pointer. So each sensor, if you look carefully here, you've got three wires running into the positive. You've got this earth wire, which runs to the coil uh, of the relay, and then you've got the two brown wires powering the sensors. Then coming out of the coil, coming out of the coil, it goes to the black wire of sensor 1 and then the blue wire or the, the neutral wire for sensor 1 is wired into the black wire of sensor 2 and then down here the black wire of sensor 2 is wired back down to 0 volts. Now, the unexpected behaviour. Watch the lights on the sensors. So sen this, is, this is sensor one. And when metal approaches it, it goes off, as you'd expect. The switch opens and the relay disengages, exactly as you'd expect. But notice the light on sensor two, it's still on indicating that the switch is still closed. If I go near sense 2, notice they both go off. Now, I was expecting this, because these are, these are switches in series. So, when you open one switch, you would expect them to all, all the lights to go off in, in series. But they don't. The reason this works this way is not immediately obvious, or at least it wasn't to me. What's happening 
is that when switch one is opened, um, the power is being cut to the coil exactly as you want, um, which is why the relay uh, switches. And the light goes off because the light must be wired somewhere in here. Um, but from sensor 2's point of view, it still has a perfectly good connection down. It really doesn't care if anything is connected to the black wire. Um, if, you, if you wire up one of these sensors um, with just the black wire just not attached and you move a piece of metal into here, um, the, the switch will still flick. It doesn't, it doesn't have to have a load attached to it in order to work. So whatever this switch is doing, it switch, uh, whatever the switch in sensor one is doing, sensor two couldn't care less. So in the normal setup, when there's me uh, neither sensor is, is near metal, then yeah, you've got the load running through like this. Um, when this switch opens, well, it's just as if there was nothing attached. And we already know it, it doesn't care if there's anything attached. So this light will stay on when switch one is opened. But when, uh, when sensor two is triggered, it's cutting, it's opening here and cutting the neutral for sensor one. So sensor one is actually becoming de-energized and therefore the lights go off on both. And there we go. And now all we need to do is just add more sensors on down the line. Um, I, I will have to look up how much load these take because obviously we're powering them and you're, you've got 20 milliamps here and you're, you're powering all of these so you are sinking a, a, some current there but even if these are 20 milliamps each which I can't believe they are then you're still only talking about 140 milliamps and just, um, the sensor itself says 200 so I, I'm pretty sure we're good I, I, I certainly can't believe it's, it's they're 20 milliamps um, the re, uh, if the relay is 20 milliamps then uh, and that's a mechanical device so a little electronic device can be a lot less than that one of the problems of, of buying hardware from far flung lands um, is that you don't tend to get any specification documentation with it. In fact, you can't even tell who manufactured it. So the best you can normally do is go and look up something very similar online. You know, go to one of the big uh, electrical uh, retailers uh, or distributors and see if you can find the documentation and just hope and pray that the item you have is the same as the item they have. I mean, it works most of the time, but it's a bit hit and miss but uh, one of the things with these sensors is you can get, they're, they're coming two types you can get um, flush mount or protruding flush mount tend to be a little bit more expensive because they have to shield around the top of the sensor um, now I don't know what these are that what type these are so uh, I thought I'd do a quick little test and what I thought was if I use a spanner that goes over the head then that will act just like a case if so, if it was flush mounted, you should be able to get the head of the spanner. Obviously it's going to trigger there, but when the spanner comes down, it, should un it, should it shouldn't trigger. Yeah. So you can see it's, it's pretty close, it probably only needs to protrude about a millimetre. So I, d I don't think that would count as flush mounting. But uh, it's close. I, I won't have it mounted like that. I will have it properly protruding. The, the full orange head will be 
above whatever it's mounted to. In fact, it will probably be considerably further than that. It, it will probably be roughly where the nuts are now. But um, just in case you needed it, yeah, you can mount these things pretty close to flush.